Now, I'm honored to introduce the woman who is leading CARES efforts around the globe. Dr. Helene Gale has had a long and distinguished career in public health as an AIDS expert at the Centers for Disease Control and then at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Please join me in welcoming CARES President and CEO, Dr. Helene Gale. Good morning, and thank you, Peggy. It has been a real joy to team up with you to bring more American women into the fight against global poverty. I am so honored to be part of this impressive gathering. The conference pledge speaks to why I stand before you today. I pledge to use my voice to empower myself and others. That commitment is at the heart of CARE's work with women and families so poor that they struggle every day for things that most of us just take for granted. Things like water, regular meals, a few dollars to send their children to school. But just like us, they work very hard. They too want the best for their families. They too juggle the complexities of life, how to get an education, access to better health services, and how to earn a living. They too have dreams and goals. And they overcome extraordinary obstacles to achieve those goals. But what you may not realize is how important it is to these women to know that we care about them. This was never clearer to me than a few years ago when I was visiting a home in India for women and children living with HIV. The women knew that I was a doctor and they were sharing their stories with me. When it came time for me to leave, one woman reached over and pulled me towards her so that I could hug her. And when she did, she started to cry. I was floored, but through a translator she explained, every doctor she ever met had refused to touch her because she had HIV infection. She said that I, an American woman was the first doctor to make her feel good about herself and that I had helped to restore her sense of self-worth, her sense of dignity. I never would have imagined 30 years ago as a young woman training as a, to be a doctor the ways in which women like her would change my world and what they would teach me. They've given me important lessons about leadership, about courage, compassion, and dignity. And along the way, they have taught me that if we want to ex end extreme poverty and provide hope for our future, we must invest in women and change policies and practices that hold them back. We cannot make progress as a world if we allow ourselves to be robbed of the potential of half of the people on this planet. Did you know that 70% of people struggle, struggling to get by on less than $1 a day are female? And that more than two-thirds of people who can't read or write are women? Or that women produce half of this world's food but only own 1% of the farmland? When women and girls can't go to school, can't gain skills to earn money, and don't have proper health care, they lose out but so do their families, their communities, their society, and ultimately our world. When we improve the lives of women and girls, everybody wins. Now, new, now we know that what works, and all of us here are in that very privileged position of being able to do something to make a difference. I really want to thank Maria Shriver for bringing us here together and for her personal contribution to this effort. As you've heard earlier, Maria and Meredith Publication have pledged to raise $200,000 for maternal health programs in Nicaragua and Zambia. Let me say a little bit about what that means. The death of a mother in childbirth is one of the most inexcusable deaths on the face of the earth. One woman, every moment of every day, dies during pregnancy or in childbirth. In countries like Sierra Leone and West Africa and in Afghanistan, a woman has a one in six chance of dying from a pregnancy-related cause.
Compare that with your risk or mine of one in 30,000. We are willing to let women die when there are simple and cheap solutions that could keep them alive. This is not only a public health travesty, this is a violation of basic human rights. It doesn't take a lot to prevent these deaths. $10 can buy clean birthing kits for six women. $120 buy, will equip a community health volunteer to teach women about maternal and child health. Maria, your pledge is a powerful part of the legacy that you're building. On behalf of the women and children whose lives will be saved, I want to thank you. And this brings me to all of you. Consider how quickly we could reach this goal, this $200,000, if each woman in this room contributed $10. If some of us gave $100 or $1,000, we could reach that goal by the end of today. There's one more thing I'd like to ask of you. CARES logo is a circle of handprints. It's an image that reminds us to reach out to each other, to work together, hand in hand. We have a booth in the exhibit hall where we would like you to come and ink your hands and place your palms on a banner. Maria is going to carry this banner to Zambia to give to the women there. Your handprints will send them a message. It will say that there are people who may live half a world away, but they care for you as they would a sister or a neighbor. And in this interconnected age, we are all neighbors. We are all sisters and brothers. And we owe it to one another and to ourselves to remember that the power is in our hands. That is the legacy that I think we will all be proud to embrace. Thank you.